So I'm here uh, with Jamie Smith, who's uh, in town here in New Haven to uh, talk uh, to our Youth Ministry Institute, but we're excited to chase down uh, yeah. some other, other things along the way. I'm excited to, to get a chance to chat. Um, you know, you were, just, you were just talking with Sarah as you've written about in your book. You, know, you say, we're not just thinking things. We are desiring animals. Um, all right, I'm persuaded. Um, but, but we are also thinking yeah. things, right? And you, you spend all this time writing books and giving talks and spreading ideas. Uh, what, is the, what is the role of ideas in the sort of formation that you're talking about? Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm definitely trying to change people's minds, <laughs> right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I think, and, and, and my emphasis is probably also trying to overcorrect from certain streams and traditions that actually don't honor these other aspects of who we are. So I think in the best case scenario, there is this feedback loop between reflection and practice. And uh, um, one of the reasons why ideas matter is because they are the engine of intentionality. Right, so that uh, um, it's precisely, uh, you know, the reason why I write books to try to get people to think about the practices they're immersed in is so that then they can actually come at their way of life with a new intentionality, including, I think I should not do this, I think I should do that. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of reason why we need to redeem reflection as an engine for propelling us into good ways of life. I, I just still remain convinced that um, you can't think your way to holiness, right? Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't think your way um, to new habits. And so uh, in, in my experience, I need the thinking to generate intentionality, but then what I need to do with that is use the intentionality to get myself convicted enough to give myself over to communities of practice that I know are going to be doing more than just informing me. Does that does that make sense? So is, is this something like the old saw? I forget if it's from Dallas Willard or John Ortberg or somebody. Mm. The sort of the difference between training and trying. So the sort of like ideationally, like I'm just going to will myself into becoming a more generous person, like just by ideational reflection and persuasion. That would be the sort of trying version. Whereas where you're advocating is a little bit more the training model. Yes, of, absolutely. I'm persuaded I should become more generous, and so instead of applying somehow directly immediately <laughs> this my sort of will to this, I'm going to engage a set of practices that will help me become the sort of person that I'm second order reflection I want to become. It's fantastic. That's exactly. The, the, on, the, the only thing I want us to just keep in mind is, uh, um, look, the cultural liturgies that deform us are remarkably successful at doing that without getting me to think about things. So, so there's, there's may, maybe what we need is actually maybe the, the, the training and intentionality is most important if you want to get out of the defaults. Um, and so, and that makes sense, and it's why you can imagine why the Christian tradition has always had an intellectual tradition, because in a way, it's a tradition of resistance. Mm. And that's often, that's what I found often in my teaching. I teach mostly in a pluralistic college setting here at, at Yale. Most of my students aren't, aren't Christians. Um, but what they find persuasive, particularly in, in your work, mm. is this sort of thought, they first think, well, I, I'm not sure how intentionally I need to be need to be formed or whatnot. I don't know how, how I'm gonna how how I would choose. Maybe I'm even just overwhelmed. Maybe I do think I need to be formed, but how would I choose? Um, what often moves them to action is, I'm already being formed by yes, something. Yes, you know, right, this sort of right. offends, and I relate to that, right? It sort of offends our sense of sov personal sovereignty, totally, right? right? Like, oh, I thought I was determining, blazing my own trail. And then they go and read, you know, liturgies of the mall or something like that, and then yes. they're, they're suddenly like, "Oh no, yeah. um, I'm not actually the master yes. of my own destiny." Yes. Yeah. So it's not uh, um, the project is not anti-intellectual; it's anti-intellectualist, mm -hmm. right? And and uh, I, I think there's an important difference between the two.